Favorite closing line of a movie? What is it? Could be several different movies. Damn, that's a good question. Favorite closing line of a movie? Um, maybe Fight Club, you met me at a strange time in my life. I always love it because it's so dry. Um, I don't know if I remember a lot of closing lines of the movie, but they, one interesting thing about it uh, is that in screenwriting class, they taught us that you can look in good scripts, you can look, look at the very first line in a script and the very last line in a script. And if it's written well, then you can see the character change in those two lines or the, 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 whatever the movie was communicating to you is supposed to be like one view of the world is the first line and the changed view of the world is the last line. I haven't examined a lot of scripts if that is actually the case, but I love the idea that the, ideally the protagonist talks differently, says something different, and most of the time probably the opposite of what he said in the beginning, in the end, if that character change that we talked about, you know, that, that death right. and rebirth thing is fully delivered, that that might be the case. Is that the case for you met me at a strange point in my life? I don't know what the first line of Fight Club is. I would have to look that up. I don't know, but that's the theory, I think. So looking at some of your films, was there an ending line where you said, no, no, we've got to, it's got to be delivered in a different tone. There has to be a different look in the eye. It's not what I envisioned. Uh, every single one, because I think because there comes the point where the movie takes over and tells you what it wants to be. It's such a cliche line, but it's so true that that thing on the screen suddenly is something different from what you imagine. That in my experience, the ending that I initially shot never works. I might as well, for the next project, just not shoot an ending, cut the film together, and then see what ending it wants to have. But with 13 Sins, at least, I learned that, that I at least shot two endings, knowing that. And then I was like, let's see which ending presents itself and wants to be itself more. And that was interesting because I usually am always for the darker ending. You know, the, dark, the darker the better because it has that air of it's more intelligent or something, which is nonsense. Why is it more intelligent, intelligent if your protagonist dies in the end than when he doesn't? But I always feel like I've delivered Shakespeare if there's death in the end rather than a happy Hollywood ending. But in 13 Sins, we shot two endings, one dark one where the protagonist does die and one lighter one where he doesn't. And for the first time when I played them both, I had the feeling I want the lighter one because I have seen this character go through all these trials and tribulations for 90 minutes, for two hours. He doesn't deserve to die. Like he deserves, I, he means too much to me to sacrifice him at the end of the movie, you know? And then we test screened both movies and got the same feedback that people said, it's so dark, please at least give us an ending that is not even darker than that. So it's, it's not just the ending line, because you said the look in his face mm -hmm, or something. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's important is the end music. It took us forever for the light, more light-hearted version for 13 Sins, which is still pretty dark, to find the right end track, because that is how you release the audience back into the world with that feeling, right? It's a combination of the last line, of the last look, of the last image. Is it the crane shot that goes back, or is it you know, is nature restored, or what? Or do you go in, or is it open-ended, or whatever? And then, unfortunately, I wish you didn't have to, but you kind of have to show your hand a little bit by choosing the end track that you're choosing, because it does give away what you want the audience to feel. We talked about that earlier. The, you know, how how vulnerable you are as a filmmaker if the audience knows what you're trying to make them feel and which emotion you're trying to manipulate them into, nothing says that more overtly than your closing music over the credits. You know? So it took us forever to try different, different music stuff and it was a different movie every single time. And then in the end we found one that was just in between where, you, where it was not clear what the movie wanted you to feel, hopefully, which might be uncomfortable for a lot of audiences, like the one you talked about where someone wants a happy end and a happy kind of closed off end, they would probably hate that ending to begin with and then with that music because it leaves it emotionally a little bit ambiguous. But I kind of love that for that ending. What about with the Bourne series? 
Because the music the, from the first one I can remember doesn't necessarily make me feel like it's a total happy ending, but there's a promise in the music, but it doesn't mean that everything's rosy. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. I don't uh -huh, know. Uh -huh. You think of the... the, the I, I don't remember those okay. specific scores, but I think that's exactly what you'd want it to be if it's not a closed ending. Because everything is rosy, is is not a very it's not a very challenging no. ending. And if you're trying to make a movie where where people will gather in groups outside of the theater to discuss, and the louder they are screaming at each other, the better, because you have the feeling you you know kind of you you brought up emotions, but let your own opinion about it be as much in the background as possible, and let it be ambiguous. That to me feels very grown up because you're giving the audience you're releasing them ideally with a question and not with an answer. That is the ambition, at least. Whether that works or not, I don't know. But I think great, great movies do that. Like Fight Club does it. A lot of Fincher's movies do that. Last Frontier, for sure, does that on a great scheme where it's about like, questions about humanity that you're being. Um, so I don't know how the Bourne series handles that, but I could imagine that the character is complex enough that you can't force him into a clean cut, this is a positive ending. Kind of thing. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Aside from your screening in Kosovo, which we know you, you did not probably stand outside and listen to some of the, the groups because there were other issues going on, but from other maybe more tame uh, screenings, have you sort of lingered outside just to hear even the intensity of the discussion? Not even the words being said, but the, 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 the passion in someone's voice when they were debating with a friend over something. Not in my own, with my own movie so much because I'm mostly in the Q&A and that discussion happens right there in the audience, which I love. That sometimes happens that one person asks a question and then someone in the audience, just when I'm about to answer, answers that question, but in, with an attitude. And then that person, <laughs> and there is something <laughs> happening. You know, and the more of that happens, the better. You know, the more involved people feel. doesn't mean they love the movie necessarily. Some people might hate the movie but have a very strong opinion about something and then that triggered blah, blah, blah. Something. But I've seen it with other movies, uh, Wings of Desire. When I first watched Wings of Desire, there was the afternoon, Wim, 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 Wim Wenders, Wim Wenders, I don't know how you say it in English. Um, there was the afternoon show, and I arrived for the evening show, and there were all these people, these little groups standing in front of the theater, debating as if it was like a college course or something. And I was like, wow, I'm, I, I wonder what m movie I'm getting myself into here. You know? oh, Breaking the Waves is, I think, the same. Thing where people Breaking the Waves to me is one of those movies that I can't. I watch it every single time it's screened somewhere because every time I'm hoping that this time she's going to make it. This time she's going to survive. I know it's a movie. It's probably going to end the same way it ended last time. But that character has me so much that for some reason she's become real to me, and I'm you know following her wherever she's screening within 100 miles. Breaking the Waves. And after that movie, I can never talk, but a lot of people can, and there are the most, because people either hate her or love her, or, but everyone has a relationship with the protagonist, you know? And that is definitely one of the movies that leads to discussions outside of the movie theater. I love that. Yeah, it's an interesting feeling when you really, when you're just speechless and you can't even make small talk yeah. after a film. Yeah. I've been there many times. Right. and. You have to maybe use the bathroom, or you have to go get a drink of water, or something. Oh, and you have to that, face human beings. With me, that might take days. It's oh not wow! Just like I want to go home as quickly as possible, and that's not just when something is tragic. I felt like that after The Revenant, or something. Like it's just being overwhelmed by either the filmmaking quality, or the protagonist's fate in the story, or something. You know, it's like it has to be a pretty bad movie for me to want to discuss it with someone right afterwards. You know? Or not a bad movie, but at least <laughs> someone that does not have its hooks in me mm -hmm. so much that I will think about it in a week or two to come. Do you think that's an introvert-extrovert issue? Oh, maybe. Because I wonder if because introverts are so internal, and that's not to say extroverts don't feel things and are internal at times, but extroverts need to vocalize right. so much, whereas introverts really just, they have, they just let it ruminate and we kind of have to work it out in our own heads, I think, sometimes before sense. we... Isn't there this thing that, that extroverts get energy from contact with other people and mm -hmm. introverts it sucks energy out of them? Right, and they gain energy from being internal yeah. and being by themselves. So that would make sense to me that if I'm already so exhausted emotionally by the movie, 
I have no more energy to give, so I can't interact with people that which would then need m require more energy because I don't have that energy. I just need to go home and re yeah. gain that energy or something. I don't know. It's interesting. Have you ever had trouble even driving? Sometimes it's just like I think I need to pull on a side street and just sit here for oh. a second after a certain films. Not that I can remember. No. Okay. Yeah. But that would make sense. <laughs> don't don't drive emotionally impacted yeah. after this movie. There you go. <laughs>